Hi everyone. Hope you're all doing well. Welcome to another one of our weekly webinars. Today we are going to discuss assumption questions in CR. Now I'm sure that it is one of the least favorite for many of you. I think it's right up there with useful to evaluate and perhaps flaw in reasoning, which is also extremely daunting. So in fact, we have another webinar scheduled for that a few weeks down the line. So today we are going to look at assumption questions. Now, are they really hard? Actually, no, but they're not. In fact, it's really easy to see which options are out of scope, etc. Just that there are a few traps and we often fall for those traps. So we'll try and discuss them in detail. I'll point them out. And perhaps next time you come across them, you will not fall for it. So radio stations with RDS tech broadcast special program information that only radios with an RDS feature can receive, all right? Now, between 1994 and 1996, the number of RDS radio stations in Wordlun increased from 250 to 600. So that's a huge jump we see, right? More than double the number of stations which were, um, uh, were um, which the RDS radio stations, basically, right? They increased by more than double. They became more than double. However, since the number of RDS equipped radios in Wordland was about the same in 1996 as in 1994. So this says that the number of radios which were equipped with RDS did not increase by a whole lot. Right? They were still the same. So then the number of Wordlanders receiving the special program uh, information probably did not increase significantly. Okay, so now as we've discussed before, we'll try to make uh, and we'll try to draw a figure in our mind. We don't have to draw it on paper, but we'll just think about. So this is what is going on in my mind when I read this. Yeah, this is what I'm looking at. So I say, well, this is Berlin, whatever. All right. So and then it had in 1994, it had these radio stations. Yeah. So let's say there is R1, and um, a station has a certain reach. Right. Let's say it was transmitting program to all the radios which were inside this part. Let's say there was an R2, then again, this was you know sending out signal to this area. Then let's say there was an R3, which was sending out to this particular area. Let's say there was an R4, which was sending out to this particular area, something like this. Right? All right, so let's say that in 1994, there were these four stations. The actual number is 250, but let's just assume. So this is what is going on in my mind. That Okay, there are these stations. Now, there are people who have those RDS equipped radios. So let me make those people. Let's say there are these people. Let's say there are 100. They're all over Verdlin, right? And they have these RDS equipped radios. So, of course, in case there are something called RDS equipped radios, there would be something called regular radios, right? The ones which are not equipped with RDS. So let me show those by crosses. Let's say then they are these crosses, people who do not have RDS in their radios. So then there are these two kinds of people, right? All right. Now, these dots, the people with which who have radios with RDS, the number of these dots did not increase substantially from 1994 to 1996. So let's say they were about 100 in 1994 and they were about 100 in 1996 also. Look at what happened to the number of stations. Yeah, that increased substantially. So from 250 that went up to 600. So then a lot of these R5, R6, R7, R8 also came into the picture, right? Somewhere they all, of course, look, please understand that there can certainly be overlap in the regions because a lot of uh, radio stations could be serving same regions or they could be overlapping, right? Just like, for example, when we get a uh, radio run, for example, FM, right? we get there, there can be various different channels, isn't it? At different frequencies. So similarly, you could get programming from various different stations in the same area. There shouldn't be any problem, right? Okay. Now, now based on this data, that the number of radios that are equipped, the number of people who have these radios which are equipped with RDS, it hasn't really changed much. Even the number of stations has gone really high. What is our conclusion now? In uh, in an assumption question, 
you have to separate out the conclusion. Please remember, just like in a strength and weaken question, we know that we have to strengthen or weaken a particular conclusion. In an assumption question, remember that you have to have to look at what the assumption is because you know that that is where first the first trap comes in uh, what the conclusion is. That is where the first trap comes. In case we are not certain of what the conclusion is, then we can certainly not answer what the assumption is correctly for sure. Yeah. What is our conclusion over here? We'll separate out the premises and the conclusion. So conclusion is. The number of world lenders receiving the special program information probably did not increase significantly from 1994 to 1996. So it says that number of people getting the programming, getting the RDS programming, it did not increase substantially. It, it, it stayed kind of say, stayed same from 94 to 96. Now this is our conclusion and we have to see what is the assumption that we need for this conclusion. Okay, option A. In 1996, most word lenders who lived within the listening area of an RDS station. So we're saying that in 1996, that is after a lot of those um, new stations, the RDS stations had come up. Yeah? Uh, most uh, Worldlanders who lived within the listening area of an RDS station already had a radio equipped to receive RDS. Now, is it essential? What is an assumption? It has, it is necessary for a conclusion to hold, right? It must be, must be true. Okay, so let's say I put an R5. This is my new radio station that has come up, RDS radio station. Let's say I have an R6 and this is another new radio station that has come up. Let's say I have an R7 somewhere over here. R7, this is also new that has come up. Doesn't matter, right? So my R5, 6 and 7 are new. Now, is it essential that in 1996, most people who were within range, within the listening area of, of an RDS station, they already had a radio equipped to receive RDS. Is it essential that these dots in these regions where you, they are getting an RDS signal have to be more than the crosses? Is it essential? No, it isn't, right? People who do not have an RDS equipped radio is actually out of scope for us. We're not worried about them at all. What are we worried about? We are saying that the number of people who do have an RDS equipped radio, they have stayed, that, that number has stayed the same, right? So then do we need that, uh, this, the number of cross, the number of dots should be more than the number of crosses at 50% or more, more than 50% people should have had an RDS equipped radio in these regions, in these regions. In 1996 means we're talking about all the R's from R1 to R7, we're talking about all the R's. Is it necessary that in any one of these regions, the number of dots should be more than the number of crosses? Certainly not, right? We the the you know we usually say that in CR questions we compare two scenarios, right? So what are we comparing over here from 1994 to 1996? The number of people who had an RDS equipped radio. We are not talking about the number of people who had an RDS equipped radio versus the number of people who did not have an RDS equipped radio, right? So that is the reason why A is not our answer. Okay, equipping uh, a radio station with RDS technology does not decrease the station's listening area. Now, do we need this to be true that it does not decrease the station's listening area? Tell me what happens in case, let's say this R5, R6 and R7 were radio station, but then they became RDS equipped later on. Let's say if their range did decrease a little or whatever, does it then, is it that our conclusion cannot hold? Is it that we cannot say the number of people getting RDS programs stayed the same? No, it doesn't make any sense, right? It, it isn't really logical at all. It doesn't matter. Even if the, their area does decrease a little bit, it doesn't matter. We have actually increased the number of radio stations from 250 to 600. We've more than doubled it. Even if their range has decreased, it doesn't matter at all. It's not essential for our conclusion. Okay, now in 1996, Worldlanders who did not own radios equipped to receive RDS could not receive any programming from the RDS sta radio stations that began broadcasting in Worldland after 1994. Now, 
we are saying that in 1996, worldlanders who did not own radios equipped to receive RDS, they could not receive any programming from the RDS radio stations. Yeah, that began broadcasting after later on. Yeah, now is it essential? Again, we have to see that. Is it necessary that these people, then in 1996, these people could not, who did not own radios, they could not um, receive any RDS uh, programming? Is that essential? Well, it's not essential, right? It is okay even if people, worldlanders who did not own radios equipped with RDS, they, um, it, it is okay even if they did receive programming. How, for example, maybe you know they did not receive it on their own radio for sure, but maybe they heard it on the neighbor's radio, isn't it? But then that is something that they could have done in 1994 also, isn't it? So then it doesn't really matter. We There is no way that we are weakening or we are actually breaking our conclusion by saying this, right? Our conclusion, the number of people, it is not giving us the distinction between, let's say, 1994 and 1996, isn't it? That is the distinction that we need to find out. As we said, People who did not own radios equipped to, to receive RDS, they are actually out of scope for us. We don't really care, right? We said over here also, when we were discussing our dots and crosses, we said that it doesn't really matter. Those people is, uh, the number of that, those people is not what we are talking about. We're talking about the number of people who do have an RDS equipped radio, right? Okay. So then this is also not the answer. How about D? Knew if any of the RDS uh, radio stations that began broadcasting in Worldland after 1994 broadcast to people with RDS equipped radios living in areas not previously reached by RDS stations. What does this mean? Knew if any of the RDS that began broadcasting, what are we talking about? We are talking about our R5, about our R6, and about our R7, right? Those that start broadcasting after 1994 that few, if any of these, they're saying that we are talking about these, that none of these, few, if any, few, what does few mean? Few means almost none, right? When I say few people will come, it means I'm not expecting anyone to come. Maybe one will come if at all, otherwise none, yeah. So they're saying almost none of these, they uh, began broadcasting after 1994, they began broadcasting to people with RDS equipped radios living in areas not previously reached by RDS station. Now, who are the people who have an RDS equipped radio, but they are living in areas not previously reached? Look, so then, uh, for example, we got R6, right? This fellow, this who is someone who has an RDS equipped radio, but then previously he was not being reached. This fellow has an RDS equipped radio, but was not being reached. Similarly, this fellow was not being re uh, reached by R1, R2, R3, or R4, right? So we have, when we say that 100 people, we said all these dots, they all add up to 100, right? So this, 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 and this, and this, right? All these dots, we say add up to 100 in 1994 and 1996, both. Now, which is fine. But look at this. Now, this dot was not getting served. This person was not getting served. He was not getting RDS signal programming before uh, in 1994. But since R5 came between 1994 to 1996, this person started getting programming. So even though the number of radios equipped with RDS did not change, but then this person who was not so but look, there are two things that you need to get RDS programming, right? One, you need a radio that is equipped with RDS. And two, you need to have a center, a, a service center, a radio station serving you, isn't it? You need two things for that. Now, he, this person had a radio until 1994, but he did not have a radio station serving him. But then now what happens to 1996 that another radio station comes back comes out in his zone. So now this station is serving this guy and now he's also receiving uh, RDS. Before he was not receiving RDS, even though he had a uh, radio equipped with RDS. So that is why we have to say 
that this must be true that none of these stations they started they were broadcasting to people who did not previously receive rds what we are trying to say is that r5 should not be broadcasting these people why um, should not be broadcasting these to these people we need that to be true why because in this area there are people who had the rds radio but were not getting programming before but they're getting now so then the number of people who receive the special program the rds program has increased in case r5 is here then the number of people this person has started getting programming this person even though there are no new radios right there are people who already had radios but these this these people have started getting programming then these people have also started getting programming so then my number of people getting rds program has actually increased isn't it even though the number of radios is still the same because these people existed before also with the rds radio so then I have to say it must be true that R6 was not serving in this region, right? R6 would have been serving somewhere here only, that is serving people who were already getting uh, the RDS. Only then can I say that the number of people receiving the program did not increase significantly. Right, even though more stations came up. So then I do need this option to be true for my conclusion. Now, what happens in case I negate it? Then I say that no, there were radio stations who started broadcasting to people who had the RDS radios, but they were living in areas which were not previously being uh, not previously receiving RDS signal. And then in that case, suddenly what happens? Then my number of people getting special program increases and my conclusion, it falls, it breaks, right? So then my option D is certainly an assumption. Let's look at option E also. The RDS radio stations in Worldland in 1996 did not all offer the same type of programming. Now, the type of programming is out of scope for us, right? We're not discussing the type of programming at all, isn't it? So then, of course, this is also incorrect. Now, do remember an assumption is, of course, we know it's a missing link. It will not be there in the uh, in the argument. And it is necessary for our conclusion to be true. So that is the reason why we use assumption negation technique. The moment we negate it, what happens? That our conclusion falls. Right, so because it is necessary for a conclusion. So that is why ANT, our assumption negation technique is pretty useful in these questions.